Good morning. Good morning. We're buzzing in here today, it's buzzing. If you'd like to take your seats, <laughs> our service is about to start. So a very warm welcome to you all here this morning, for those of you here in the church and for those of you also watching at home. Um, a very warm welcome. My name is Paul Rogers and this is my wife Andrea. Yes, and a warm we're welcome very pleased, from me too. We're very pleased to be able to um, welcome you to our baptism service. That's the first service of 2024. 2024. It's the 7th of January and we've got seven people being baptised. Hey, isn't that great? So we're, we're very grateful that at the moment the baptistry is oh, closed. Yes. So there, there will be significant risk of me getting wet. This why, I don't, is that why you got me to stand yes, on this side? Yes, that's why I said Paul stand Because normally, normally I stand on that side yeah, of Andrea, so but anyway. Weird. So. Anyway, special welcome to you, particularly if you've never been to Argyle Community Church before, if you've never been at one of our services, and if you are a guest or a friend or a relative or a neighbour of one of our baptismal ease today. So um, a special welcome to you and also if you are watching online today. So... We've got Richard Baxter as our speaker today. Welcome, John Richard. Trace where he is. Yeah, he's just sat there in the middle. Oh, there, there he is. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, a very warm welcome yeah. to you. And after the service today, we will be serving teas and coffees out there in the room there to my right. And following that, there's going to be a lunch. Ooh, I hear you say. Yes, so if you've never been to a lunch at Argyle Community Church before, they are well worth attending. <laughs> it's actually Is that why you're here today? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually called a bring and share lunch. But if you've come and you haven't brought any food, that's okay. Because typical Argali style is that there's always loads of food and lots of food left over. So there will be plenty for you. So you are all invited yeah. to stay for the lunch today. I just want to um, say how pleased I am to be back with you after a little break of being unwell. Um, some of you will know that I had a short stay in hospital with pneumonia, but I'm so pleased to be back amongst you this morning. And I just want to say a special thank you to all those that prayed for me, because um, prayer works. Amen. Prayer really Amen. works. And I'm standing here this morning as a testimony that prayer really does work. So, um, for those of you who don't know, um, a week tomorrow, on Monday the 19th, there is a, a ladies, a glow meeting at Southcote Family Church. And at that meeting, I will be sharing some of my reflections and insights and testimony of what God, I believe, spoke to me, shared with me, and did in me during that time when I was ill, amongst other things as well. So if you're a lady, you're welcome to come to that. And I've got some flyers with me with information of where it is, what time, so please come and ask me for a flyer, and I'll be happy to give you one. So I'm going to begin our service today with a reading, and it's from John chapter 1. Verses 14 to 18. So I'm going to read that now. <clears throat> the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. That might be a familiar verse to some of you. <coughs> we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. And that particular, I want to highlight that verse to you, because when I was praying yesterday and asking the Holy Spirit to give me a verse, this is the verse he highlighted to me to share with you this morning. From the fullness of his grace, mm -hmm. we have all received one blessing after another. Wow, that deserves a hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. And I'm so glad that today God has made Jesus known to me, has revealed Jesus and the truth of the gospel known to me. And I'm sure all those getting baptised today can say the same, and that many of you sitting here this morning can also say the same. So I'm just going to pray now. So let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for making Jesus known to me. I want to thank you for each and every one today that is being baptised in this place today. I want to thank you for the work that you've done in each of their lives, for the work that by your Holy Spirit you've done in each of our lives. I want to thank you for this opportunity today that we can come and meet together in your name, Jesus. The name of Jesus that is higher and greater and more powerful than any other name. Amen. For your word says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And those of us that know you this morning want to bow before you. Amen. Amen. We bow, we bow humbly before your throne, Jesus as your children, as your sons, and as your daughters. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done in our lives and all that you've yet to do. And for this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. May God bless each and every one today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now we're going to have our first song. Now, all of the songs you hear today are songs that have been, cho been chosen by those who are being baptised. And the first song that we're singing is called The Lion and the Lamb. And this has been chosen by Ivan, who's going to be baptised later and who's going to share his testimony with us. And that's what you're going to hear today. You're going to hear each of the seven people give their testimony about how they, their story, how they came to know Christ and why they've decided to come and be baptised. Um, so Malcolm and the, the worship group here are going to all lead us so I'd ask you if you're able to please stand and sing this song The Lion and the Lamb
That's a good choice, Ivan. That's a great way to start our service, wasn't it? And um, every knee will bow. So, Ivan, can I invite you to come up and stand here? And have you, you've got your phone with you to share your... Excellent. So I'm going to invite you to share your testimony with everybody here. So, um, off you go. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Ivan and I'm from Spain. I've lived here in Reading since I was at primary school. I'm currently studying my first year of robotics at the University of Bristol, University of West of England, which I'm really enjoying. This will be my second baptism since I, the first one was when I was a baby by a Catholic church. The beginning of my path to be Christian began when I was little, since I learned from my mother about God and Jesus. She told me about the life of Jesus and other stories from the Bible throughout my childhood. At that time, I thought of Jesus and God as my superheroes. They helped us and loved us a lot, and they also had some super cool stories. Then we moved to UK. After lockdown, I discovered our girl community church, and that was when I began to understand everything that my mother taught me. My first communion was here at Gal Community Church on September 21, 2021, which was really special to me. And I think I really started to build my faith to Jesus and God during some very hard times like summer 2022. Here on Gal, I was drawn to belief in God, in his goodness and in his immeasurable love. Here I understood that we could talk to God when we needed it. Here I understood that it is not necessary to be perfect, to be loved. Here I understood that to be happy and walk safely through our life, Jesus need have to trust in God, trust in his plans that he has prepared for each of us, even if sometimes the path of, is difficult or we don't understand it. Trusting in God, I also learned to see the light and bright, thing, bright side of things to look for the blessings that are hidden behind everything that happens in our life. God never, never makes mistakes, and that's the best father that he is. Um, he always wants the best for us. That is why I thank him for what he gives me and also for what he takes from me. He knows. My life, after fully trusting God, has been much more joyful since God gave us hope and strength to move forward in our difficult time at home. God also gave us good people who helped us with our problems to be more happy and independent. To describe this moment in my life, I chose the Bible verse Matthew 8, verse 24 to 26. With that warning, a furious storm came up to the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up. Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, You are of little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and he was completely calm. As in this verse, when I faced a great storm in my life, I really thought I could drown. But I had faith, so and everything calmed down. Thank you for, to everyone in the Argo uh, family and for being a very important part of my life and my story. Thank you for your prayers and for your support and love towards me and my mother. And especially thanks to Mark, Cheryl, Francis, Sandy, Trevor and Jamie for being so close to us. My future begins now with Jesus as my traveling friend and companion. Thank you all for joining me in this special day for me. That's great, thank you. Great, well done. Thank you, Ivan. That was great. We're, we're going to sing the next song. This is a song that's been chosen by um, Penny and Vincent. You'll see that the words appear in both Cantonese and in English on the screen. But it's probably best not to try and sing them in English, because it probably will... <laughs> So, for those of you who can sing in Cantonese, then you know, we, we, you know, we're relying upon you. So, um, but so you can understand the wonder of the words and the meaning of the words. They'll be there in English for those of you who don't speak Cantonese. So, um, over to, to Joe and to Malcolm and the team. And Anne as well.
of inviting Penny up and she's going to share her story, her testimony and after Penny, her husband Vincent is going to come up and share. So welcome Penny. Give her a round of applause. 
before all, I want to especially thank Anne to sing Cantonese for me. She practiced a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hi, I'm uh, Penny. I'm Hong Kong and start to come to Agao Community Church since September 2022. Although the Lord keeps sending someone to share the gospel to me since I was a child, but I walked away from God. However, I would pray sometimes in those years, especially when I had some difficulty or at hard time, like a lot of people. But what made me to become a Christian is all about the words, lucky and unlucky. Most of the time of my life, unlucky seems as one of the symbol of me. Let's share some examples. I have worked as a crisis counselor to help those people with high suicidal risk. And one of my duty was a 24 hours hotline. Every time I was on duty, there would be a lot of calls. Yeah, my colleague even gave me a name, Hong Pai Agu. I'm sorry, I don't know how to translate this word. <laughs> and the other, during my honeymoon trip, my husband, Vincent, he had commented that he had never experienced a series of unlucky so frequently. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell, go through the details, or you can ask him later. <laughs> of course, there still have many examples in my life, but I won't focus too much on my unlucky today. Instead, I'm going to talk about lucky. From my family start to plan to more to move from Hong Kong to UK, to we land in UK. It was only about four and a half months. Also, we had bought a flat in UK within four days, rent a flat within eight days, and sold my house in Hong Kong within three weeks. All those things was happen at the same time. The process was too lucky. And for me, I feel strange. It was so unusual compared to my past experience, right? So I start to pray and ask God, God, do you want me to do something good in UK? Do you want me to help those people in need, especially suicide professor person? I eager to get the answer from God and prepare to do something in here. I keep praying, but no reply from God. However, at the same time, my lucky was still going on. My family met Sand and Joyce oh, here. <laughs> at the first day when we coming in Hong in UK. And then they invite us to join the welcome course for Hong Kong people. Yeah. We had chance to go to this church and meet Jimmy. Alice, Anne, Malcolm, <laughs> Anthony, Paul, Andra, and all of you. Sorry, I can't count all of you. <laughs> we felt, my family felt comfortable and welcome, and we start to come here every Sunday. It's hard for me to say which moment, but one moment I realized that the answer is not about the issue of lucky or unlucky. God not occupy me to do something. All those lucky things were prepared by God. God invited me to the Holy Family again. God, my Lord, had already prepared. Last but not the least, thanks the church and all of you. How amazing of this Holy Family. Last thing, if someone go to your home, as a guest, he or she feel good in your home, then not live, and even stay and live here. There's no, no one to reject that person, and even welcome persons to be one of their family members. How amazing. We become a family, not because we have a blood relationship, but the Jesus blood and God love. My Lord, 
From now on, I will work and live what you want me to be. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. That was wonderful. You coming up, Vincent? Have you found your phone, Vincent? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. He's had his testimony all written on his phone. So I don't know. Maybe he's going to add lib. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah, I'm Vincent. I came from Hong Kong. Yeah, yes, very. I think my, my wife transfer is unlucky to me. Yeah, I lost my phone. Be, uh, no, I just forgot what, where, where is my phone now. But yeah, but I think this is a challenge. Yeah, I, I think this is a challenge. Previously, I will be very nervous if I lost something. But I think, I think God wants me to say something from my heart. So after my speech, my testimony will be based really from my heart, truly hard, uh, because I lost my phone, no, nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I never felt that I was standing on here because it's 6,000 miles away from my birthplace. It's very long. And I have been, um, I knew Bibles when I was 11. Uh, I, I entered a secondary school, and then this is a Catholic school. So I need to read the Holy Prayer for seven years. But after, until I graduate, I enter university, I stopped. So, um, but I, at that moment, I know many Jesus' story, and I know he saved us. He died for us. After graduates, after university graduates, in my some sad time, I was brought to church by my friends. Uh, they are all nice in the church, but very nice to me. Uh, so that at that moment, I just stayed there for some period of time, but didn't say long. Then I, because in Hong Kong, everyone will know, uh, it's so excited city. It, it's an excited city. You can do many things, and many relatives, many families, members there. So, and I can choose not to go to church. That's why I, I leave church, and then, but I do. God is very mercy. Wish Him mercy. Here, no matter where I was. He will knock my door again. So, I've got a lovely family. My wife and my two children. Without them, I really won't come to UK. Uh, but when I land UK, as my wife said, very, very lucky. We are settled here very easily. And thanks to Sander and Joyce, they brought me to Agao Community Church. Here, I feel alone. I met many nice people, nice, nice local people, and many Hong Kong Hong Kong are here. They are all very nice. They make me feel safe, welcome, and so I decide to go to church with my family on every Sunday, and then I will sing hymns. And I will, and I start to read the Bibles again. So that's amazing because when I read the Bible, in my child time, I would just sit like it is a, this is a fiction book and just know God, Jesus is died for us. But when I really hear, I, I listen to Jamie's, Jamie's sermon. I was very feel that God is the true God. And I am very happy that I stay here. And I have, after a few months, I decided that I will stay here. I want to stay here 
uh, because of every one of you and also because of God. And so, yeah, I still got the hymn I chosen. Uh, the, the, the verses I choose is from Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from your side, yourself, it is the gift of God, not by work so that no one can boost. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to trust God and I want to join this big family because they are all very welcome of me. So today I'm going to be baptized and I think I'm going to start to receive the gift from God. Thank you very much. Vincent, thank you. That was great. Despite not having it on your phone. That was that was really, really good. So thank you. And now we are going to sing Michael's choice of song. And that is entitled Thank You. And after that, um, Michael's going to come and share his story. Uh, you probably won't know this song. So could I suggest that maybe you just sit where you are and look at the, the lyrics on the screen. And just uh, follow it as, as Wing and I play it. <laughs> so many times you reached out to me. But I turned my back Cause I didn't think You had what I need And now you're everything Everything to me And I can't be without you God, you're everything And I want to say thank you I was lost and you found me I was dead inside and you breathed into me and you brought these bones to life and I want to say thank you, thank you for saving me, thank you for loving me unconditionally, oh, still with open Come on, Michael. Uh, Michael's opportunity now to share his testimony. So. Yeah, my name is Michael. Um, I came to the Argyle Church about sort of six months ago, and 
I have so little time, it, there's so little time to say so much. But I really wanted to start off my testimony to say, by saying thank you to all of you, especially to my parents, Richard, and to my friends today who are here today. Because none of this I can attribute to myself. For if it wasn't for your endurance of love and patience, I wouldn't be standing here and from the bottom of my heart, I, I thank you. I cannot express in words how grateful I am. This has been one of the most difficult things to write. My PhD was way easier. <laughs> Because if you had told me 10 years ago that I'd be standing here in front of you or professing my love for Christ, I would have laughed in your face and told you to get lost. I was your stereotypical party boy, and to my parents' dismay, I loved reveling in darkness. My tongue was vicious and vile, and my care was only for myself. Chapter Isaiah 14 really, really rang in my ears because it really described me perfectly. Full of pride, and I was full of me, me, me. If there was one thing that I loved more than partying, it was science. I thought science was the answer to it all. Who needs God when you have science? Relationships wasn't something that cr had crossed my mind, but I did come to the realization that I was gay at my time in Portsmouth. But this, wasn't, I, this I didn't fully accept until I met my first ba boyfriend while I was working in Cambridge. Looking back, that was an absolute hedonistic nightmare that resulted in me in losing my job uh, and being penniless sleeping on a friend's couch for months. That was my first existential crisis. There's many more to come. Uh, believe me, uh, believing that I was unlovable, I focused on becoming a scientist, and with the help of my parents, um, I managed to do a master's and then complete my PhD in 2013. I thought I was God's gift to science. I knew it all. Believing, uh, believing I was on the path of, to winning the Nobel Prize, because after all, who knew science better than me? In 2015, my mother became ill with cancer, and it was terminal. It was a difficult time for all of us, but especially for my father. It was my first taste of true, what true unconditional love looked like because my father's dedication to my mother was so inspiring but also heartbreaking. This resulted in me having my second existential crisis because I concluded that science was not, um, was not all there is and that there was something more. I sank into a deep depression and I used alcohol and drugs to numb the pain. It got so bad one night that I decided, determined to end it. And after binging an alcohol, uh, on alcohol and drugs, I, that I decided to run in front of a bus. It was here that I discovered my first angel, dressed, uh, dressed in a police uniform, who saved me. He pushed me out of the way of an oncoming bus and wrestled me to the ground. How dare he? I was so angry with him. But looking back, it doesn't even bear to imagine. In that way, um, this resulted in me spending 24 hours in Prospect Park Mental Hospital f for observation. In that white room, on my own, I realized I was on a path of self-destruction and that drugs and alcohol weren't the answer. I went to Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, and it was there that I became aware of my powerless powerlessness and the existence of a power higher than myself. It was there that I started searching for God. Did I pick up the Bible? No, I didn't. Um, I read everything but the Bible, a ton of spiritual literature from the Bhagavad Gita to the Tao Te Ching, to, uh, to going into Buddhism, to the apocryphal text, and in New Age religions. At that time, I fully believed that Jesus was a prophet who came to show us the way to becoming Godheads, and that he, like Buddha, had reached enlightenment, and that this, uh, and that this was achieved through ritualistic practices and the denial of self. I was into chanting med meditation, restriction diets, pr prostrating myself in front of anything and everything that called itself either a guru or a god. Oh, how wrong I was. Because I found that these only showed me the way to the truth, not truth itself. No matter how hard I tried, I kept failing. I'd, at that time, my scientific career was faltering because, I, because I, as I realized, I didn't fully believe in it being the only answer anymore. And so I went to work for a biotech company as a salesperson. I was still believing in a works-based salvation and fully believed in the fulfillment and the path to heaven was about helping others. I was volunteering at many outreach places and at the Baker Street Neighborhood Association, Basana. I felt good. I was helping others. I became involved with Basana to the point that I became a trustee. However, I was doing this for my own vainglory. So how did I get saved? Well, this is a story in itself and there's only one man and my second angel who I can credit this to. And he's sitting here today and he's giving a sermon. And this is Richard Baxter. Richard, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. <laughs> I owe you my life. This started back in 2018 when we were planning a street party which happened to coincide with Pride Month. 
at that time, we used the Kerry Baptist Church venue uh, and the Oasis. And during decorating, we plastered the gay pride flag everywhere. Karen Rowland, the councillor for this area, bought the items and we started decorating them both inside and outside the venue. The street party went ahead with great success until I got that fate, uh, fateful text and phone call that night from Richard explaining that members of the Cary Baptist Church were upset that we plastered a great pride flag everywhere and that the association between the church and the Pasana would have to end. With an ego bigger than the earth and a head full of earthly knowledge, I came to Richard's house not that night to explain to you why the church and the Bible was wrong. How dare you tell me I'm wrong? I have a PhD, don't you know? <laughs> well, this led to a two-year discussion with neither side giving up. And during those two years, Richard gave me the Bible and other literature, and I read it. Determined to prove you wrong, like all unsaved souls, I cherry-picked the Bible. I hated Romans. <laughs> I hated Roman, I hated Jude, and I hated James. I used the Gospel of John to show you that all love is acceptable. However, my foundations were built on sand and my understanding of truth was crumbling. I was justifying my own lustful passions. It was during 2020 in the COVID pandemic that I had my third existential crisis. And at that time, I got onto my knees and started praying for God for help and understanding. I was broken. I couldn't cope. I needed spiritual help, and therapists and spirituality wasn't answering my question and couldn't assist. I begged God for help. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. He came to me in a vision, and the truth came to me like a sledgehammer to the face. He showed me everything, all my sins lay bare, and the pain that I had caused. It was then that I realized that God's laws weren't protective, were protective and not restrictive, and that our sins drive them away because they are focused on self and not him. That night, I read the book of Romans, and I listened to the Sermon on the Mount, and I can tell you, I cried. I cried my heart out. With a deep guttural brokenness, I cried all night. Chapters, uh, chapters 6, 7, 8 in Romans really jumped out at me. So the following day, with a tail between my legs and a bruised ego, I contacted you, Richard, to let you know that you were right and I was wrong. Oh, did that hurt? My ego was in tatters, and my worldview was shattered. Everything I thought I knew was wrong. What I thought was light was dark, and vice versa. Filled with the Holy Spirit, I began to pick up these pe uh, the pieces, and the worldly passions that, and desires that I once had started to no longer have the desired effect. Everything felt temporary and fake, but it was still a wrestling match with the Holy Spirit to let go. Like the Apostle Paul, I had a thorn in my side. The purification through the rebuking of the Holy Spirit was painful, but as I grew closer to God, I became more zealous. And what was once gobbledygook in the Bible, um, start, the text started to become alive. The words of God were filling my soul, and it was feeding it. It was like calorie-free buttercream. So just like, I, so just like I started, I will finish with a thank you. I thank you, Father, for sending your Son to pave the way, and I thank you, Jesus, for saving a wretch like me and making me realize that it isn't about me. It's about you. And that just like a war isn't about the soldier, it's about the battle. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice to save us unworthy souls, and today is my marriage to you. And just like a faithful partner, I cannot wait to spend an eternity in heaven with you. I love you and want nothing more than to serve you from now until eternity. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Michael, for sharing that really moving, moving testimony. It's just so wonderful to hear how God works in, in the lives of individuals and Michael's journey there. We're going to sing our next song, which is a song chosen by Carrie and Eric, and it's a song called Unreserved Love. And we've been hearing more about that, and I'm sure Eric and Carrie will sure share more about how God's love has transformed them. So. Over to you guys. Thank you very much.
to share his testimony. So welcome, Eric. And after Eric, his wife, Karen, is going to share her testimony. So as our second married couple today, actually, Paul and I got married. Not married, baptised. <laughs> baptised and married, actually, here, together, on the same day, many, many years ago. No, we got baptised first, and then four years later we got married. Anyway, over, over to you, Eric. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, I remember this is my second time uh, I share my story, uh, but I still feel a bit nervous. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, my name is Eric Hoy, and my wife, Carrie, and I have two wonderful kids, Ocean and Chelsea. Um, we have a new chapter of our life when, after we moved to UK in June 2022. And now I would like to share uh, uh, my story, how I turned to Jesus, how I become Christian. Um, in the past of my life, I always realized that I was not bad. I have good parents, good brothers, good friends, good school life, and a good career. I had a mindset that 
I can and I should use my own strength to plan and manage, control every aspect of my life. I always think I don't rely to, to God, I mean before. Um, so that's why if the things didn't come as expected, I would often find myself frustrated and quickly to blame myself and others. I become irritable. I, I mean, people easy to be angry. And I had tendency to lose my temper easily. Um, after moving to the UK, um, I mean, friends, my wife, uh, forced me, pushed me, or encouraged me <laughs> to, to accompany her to go to the church. Um, and also, uh, I mean, uh, after I go to the church, I mean, also fans shared me, and also Paul, and also some people in the church, I mean, the sermon from all of you, and it opened my eyes, opened my heart to have a deeper understanding of God and Jesus. And um, it became clear to me that everything is under God's control and follow his plan. What I'm carrying, owning, or I own before, was or is given by God. I learned about the concept of sin and the power of faith in Jesus, offering salvation to all who believed. In the middle of last year, I sensed a tension in my relationship with my family, particularly my son. I mean, I have a I had a, a serious argument with them, and at the same time, I faced significant challenge during the renovation of our house. It was difficult. I mean, it was during this difficult period that I realized I need help from my higher power. One day, I turned to prayer, humbly seeking God's guidance, and asked for forgiveness for my sins. I declared my faith in Jesus and commit to following him. Since then, my life has changed. I find peace in regular prayer, expressing gratitude to God for both the good and challenging time. Uh, even though, I mean, nowadays, uh, our house extension is not yet finished. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, the renovation starts in September 2022, and now not yet fully finished. I mean, uh, yeah, I have very down time, I mean, but every time I, I really feel, I mean, God is helping, helping us. Every time I feel very, very desperate, and I can see a light, I can see a hope, and there is a way come out to continue the renovation. So I really feel uh, the power, the strength uh, from God. I also feel God is with me and supporting me. Um, yep. Um, so I ask for God's wisdom and strength to navigate daily challenge, secure in the knowledge that God loves me and my family. I have come to understand that God has a plan and timetable for each of us, and he is always by our side, ready to save and lead us in the right direction. Yeah, I'm committed to continue my faith in Jesus, full prayer and worship, secure in the knowledge that I'm safe and God will bring me to heaven in the future. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks my friends. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. So Carrie um, is going to come up and share now. Welcome, Carrie. I grew up in Christian schools, um, but I used to think the Bible as me affections and stories. And after I became a stay-at-home mom, I worry about everything concerning my kids and my family. Constantly worry about my children's school, their development of values, and even their sibling fights. I just worry everything. And when my son got into a very good school three years back, I wasn't filled with pride or happiness. But rather, there were various worries that consumed me. And surprisingly, that school turned out to be a blessing from God. 
it helped lead both my son and me into a deeper faith. Through interaction with other parents, I heard stories of relying on God um, during success, challenges, and illnesses. And in school assemblies, I remember the teachers share their personal experiences and how they use the Bible's teaching on learning, studying, and social relationships. And it was actually my son who inspired me to start going to church um, three years ago and search for the truth behind the stories. And we love because he first loved us. I realized I need to believe in Jesus and live by his teaching, to love God and others because God loved us first and sent his son to die for us. I started praying and asking for forgiveness for my sins, seeking guidance, surrendering my worries and anxieties to God, and accepting whenever, whatever life threw our way. Um, I felt weak, especially when facing the unexpected difficulties in England. I experienced my first car crash. Um, I was ill. Uh, and also I was ill and stayed at home for over three weeks during last winter. And additionally, as uh, Eric mentioned, I underwent a home renovation that lost more than a year. There were moments um, when our family even do not have a proper external wall, but just uh, wet and dirty wooden boards. Um, the most, and the most challenging part was dealing with people who were not trustworthy and misused our trust again and again. And there was frustrations, tears, and a loss of trust in people. But God became my strength. It guided our family to join the church and provided opportunity for me to help in Honeyport and serve through Torch. God granted me enough strength to serve and understand the priority in life. Um, he teach me how to fix my eyes in him. And he always provided enough. God understand what I need and what, when I feel, I felt really bad. He didn't leave me alone. And he provided sufficient emotional support through the people in God's family here. And I thank you for people who play with me I thank you for people who pray for our family. Um, thank you for encouraging, encourage us and help us to build a relationship with God. And thanks God, comfort our family, comfort our heart. And in addition, these experiences taught our family reliance on prayer and brought us closer. So I know I'm far from perfect, but I'm determined to follow God's teaching and knowing that if I pass away, I will find peace in heaven. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your testimonies, both Carrie and also Eric. Um, you talk about your renovation taking a long time. Sometimes God's working in us, and, and in all of us, we're, we're a bit of a renovation project with God. And although we've come to Christ, that he's still renovating us and making us more Christ-like. So um, that's, a, that's a picture for us to take away. So don't be discouraged. It's a picture of God's truth and how he works in us. So I'm going to invite Jamie. For those of you who don't know, Jamie is the pastor here at our church. And um, we've got a guest who you're going to be speaking to in a moment. So um, Chris, if you'd like to come on up, and Jamie will introduce you to him. Please give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Penny and Vincent, and Eric and Carrie, and many others first came to this church because of something called the Welcome Course, a course which has been designed to welcome Hong Kongers to the UK and to help them settle. Um, and the Welcome Course is a series of videos over, I think, about six weeks. Uh, three presenters, and one of the presenters is Chris. Uh, uh, 
Just quickly for Chris, can you put up your hand if you've done the welcome course or been a helper in the welcome course? Oh, well done. Amazing, isn't Lovely it? Lovely to meet you. Yeah. So um, I said to Chris, I messaged him and said, can you come and celebrate with us because um, of what you've done via the course and, and those who put the course together. Um, we've, we've seen the blessing and uh, we are greatly blessed by the Hong Kong. <laughs> So, can you just tell us a bit, Chris, about kind of how the course came to be and your involvement in the course? Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, and congratulations to everyone who's being baptised. I don't know about you, but I was so moved to hear all the incredible stories of God's grace in your life, and well done to this church for their welcome they've been providing for many years. The, the idea behind the welcome, church, uh, welcome course came uh, from me meeting quite a few Hong Kongers that had to flee Hong Kong uh, because they were worried about being arrested. Uh, and many of them were students uh, who had taken part in some demonstrations, you might remember. And uh, they were sofa surfing. Do you know what that means? That means that they had nowhere to live, and so they had to stay at someone's house, and they had to move from one house to another. And we thought, I wonder what we could do to help. And we found lots of Christians around the UK that were willing to open their homes and welcome them in. And then we heard that the UK was going to open something called the BNO visa process. Does that yeah. ring a bell for some of you? Yeah. Hands up if you're here with a BNO visa. Yes, Fun Ying, welcome. Good to see you. And we thought, you know what, this will be the largest migration to the UK from outside of Europe since the Windrush generation. And if you know a little bit about British history, um, the Windrush generation were not welcomed very well by churches or by our government. And so we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could do a better job? If the church could be the first place where people could find a welcome. And so we started something called Hong Kong Ready Churches. And around the country, I think it was around five or 600 churches said that they wanted to do something to help Hong Kongers feel welcome here. And uh, you might remember it was lockdown and no one knew the rules. Uh, I'm not going to make any political statements about <laughs> rules, uh, but no one knew the rules. So we thought, oh, I wonder what we could do to make sure people who are arriving from Hong Kong had a friendly welcome, had uh, churches that could help them steer their way through things. And, uh, and then we thought, well, maybe a course could be part of that. And so we, we applied to the government. So would you be willing to sponsor a course? And they said, yes, as long as it's very welcoming and it doesn't tell people what to believe about God. We said, okay, um, we'll, we'll be, we're good at being welcoming, we can do that. And um, if people after the course want to do another course where they can find out about God, is that okay? And they said yes. So the government actually gave a little bit of money to make that course possible. And uh, many of you are here as part of that process. So does that help, Jamie? Yeah, it's amazing to hear um, the, the story. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you've been a Christian many years, you've written books, um, I've read some of them, they're really helpful. Um, you've uh, founded various charities and so on. Um, what advice um, would you give those being baptised here this morning? Oh wow, well I have a little gift for you. If, you've, if you're getting baptised today, over lunch, come and see me because I have a little book I want to give to you. Uh, my, my advice is stick as close as you can to Jesus. Uh, our job in life is to walk in his footsteps. And that Jesus will never steer you wrong. Uh, I know when my faith uh, goes through difficult times, the place that I find uh, easiest to reconnect is by reading the Gospels. Those stories of who Jesus was, what he did, how he lived, they help reignite faith in me when times are tough. And uh, that's my advice. Stick as close as you can to Jesus. He will never steer you wrong. Thank you. Lastly, can you just tell us quickly what, your, what kind of projects and things you're involved in right now? Because whenever I see you, you've got exciting projects on the go, so I'm interested to know. Well, um, thank you, Jamie. And again, well done for all your church is doing. Uh, I think we are in really, really interesting times. Uh, some would say, you know, lots of global crises going on right now. Um, after trying to help Hong Kongers feel welcome in the UK, we got a call from the government, could we help Afghans? because 25,000 Afghans were relocated here after the fall of Kabul. And again, I have good news, the church stepped up and about 900 churches around the UK said they wanted to do something to help Afghans. 
And then after that, you might remember that there was a, a war in Ukraine where the Russians invaded Ukraine. And again, the church stepped up in Ukraine, but also here in the UK. And many people opened their homes and uh, welcomed Ukrainians in. And we helped that to, to happen a little bit. About 185,000 Ukrainians found sanctuary in people's homes. And I started a little charity to try and get that going. Now, since then, wars have continued to start. Uh, there was a, there's a big war going on in Sudan that many people don't know anything about. And we tried really hard to get the government to say, could we do something similar to what we did for Ukrainians, uh, for Sudanese people? And so far they've been saying no. And then now you're watching the news and there are terrible things that are taking place in the Middle East. And so I was in Bethlehem just before Christmas and um, there's a lot of grieving people. Obviously, there's lots of Israelis that are grieving, many people that were killed by Hamas, that terrible attack. But there's around 20,000 people that have died in Gaza. And many of those are civilians. Many of those are children. And some of those are Christians. And so we're trying to figure out, this is something for your prayers, is there a way we could offer some kind of humanitarian sanctuary, particularly to children and their parents, who have been injured in Gaza. And uh, I have some meetings next week with the Foreign Office and with the Home Office. So please pray that God would give us favour. We might only be able to help a few, but every single person on this planet is loved by God, and that means Gazan children as well uh, as you and me. So, yeah, your, your prayers would be really appreciated. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Thanks. Chris. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> So, you're going to introduce, I need that microphone back actually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. So, it is my honour, my pleasure now um, to welcome um, Coral up to share her testimony today. Coral first walked into this church, well, she'll share it with you about, I don't know, nine years ago. And ever since, she's been part of my ladies' group on a Wednesday night that's called a discovery group. So it's a real privilege for me to welcome Coral up. So welcome, Coral. Hello, everyone. I haven't come um, as far from my uh, Hong Kong brothers and sisters. I'm from London, <laughs> which is not too far up the motorway. Um, and I've come here um, from London, um, and I first came to live at Berkshire Women's Aid, unfortunately. But God's brought me uh, quite a way now. Um, I'm just going to share a little piece with you. Um, I didn't know Jesus, but he always knew me. I've had a turbulent life on and off, made some bad choices and some better ones. I now know that Jesus was always there with me and for me. I knew the name Jesus, but I never really knew who he was. Although I knew the name Jesus related to a sort of greatness and majesty, I didn't know that name would have such an impact on my life today. The name led me to search more into the person Jesus. This led me to the Alpha Course, which I attended here at this church in 2014. I was greeted with a warm welcome by some lovely, lively Andrea, Christian people <laughs> and I've remained friends since. Um, I've got some lovely sisters from my uh, Wednesday group, June, Julia, Rhonda, thank you for getting up this morning. Um, Wendy, Siobhan, everybody, uh, Dorothy, um, Paul, um, I mentioned my good friend Andrea Rogers who has been a big part of my Christian journey and still walks beside me today. Doing the Alpha Call seemed to wake up my searching even more, each step even more with each session. 
The course also touched upon the historical side of Jesus' life and as he lived here with us on earth and the miracles he performed and the way he loved everybody and his nature and the person he is. I became, it became even more hungry to carry on searching, so I went and bought myself a Bible and started reading about Jesus. The Bible had me gripped and I read more and more and I couldn't put it down. I grew to love the Bible and the scriptures I carried on with the remaining sessions of the Alpha course and eventually I could say with confidence I knew him. Jesus had to be the son of the creator, the mighty God. There is nobody like him. Jesus spells greatness, it says so in the Bible. And I discovered that in the Bible there is everything that I need to know about the greatness of Jesus. He came to life for me. I knew that I was going to give him my life, surrender all and trust him to be the captain of my ship and to have a personal relationship with him. He spoke to me through reading his word and his word said that he took it upon himself to carry our burdens and wash away our sins. How could I deny him? when he had given me the chance to be forgiven, made new and to start afresh as a brand new me. I trust him with my life. I trust him to point out to me when I am wrong. I trust him because he answers my requests. Not always the answers that I want to hear, but he delivers one way or another. One of my favorite me time is to do a word search. Well, searching the word of God was a good thing for me and I highly recommend it. Uh, sorry, I've got one more thing to say. My Hong Kong sister, I love those shoes. <laughs> So we have some um, books to give out um, as a gift from the church to everyone being baptised. Inside the front cover is the baptism certificate with a Bible verse, so I'm going to give those out now. Um, Coral, your book is The Freedom of Self-Forgetfulness, and your verse is, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. God bless you, Coral. There you go. Okay. <coughs> Michael, your book is The Christian Manifesto, and your verse is, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. <laughs> Ivan, your book is called Need to Know, your guide to the Christian life. And your verse is, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. God's blessing to you. <laughs> Eric, where's, where's Eric? Your book is, If You Could Ask God One Question. You always had a lot of questions for me, Eric, when you were searching. <laughs> so uh, this is specially chosen for you. Your verse is, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. There you go. Eric. <laughs> Carrie, your book is called In His Image, Ten Ways God Calls Us to Reflect His Character. And your verse is, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy... He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. Thank you, okay. Penny, your book is called Beautifully Distinct, Conversations with Friends on Faith, Life and Culture. And your verse is, I have been crucified with Christ 
and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So there you go. And Vincent, your book is called Essential Christianity, the heart of the gospel in ten words. Your verse is, for it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So it's time for the baptisms. I've got to be careful not to step back, haven't I? I'm very aware of that, because the baptistry has been opened. Um, before I baptise, um, for those of you who uh, are not regular at church, um, maybe you're wondering what baptism is all about. Perhaps you've been to a christening or something, you've seen a baby get sprinkled with water, and you're thinking, what is this um, either big bath or small swimming pool? What's that all about? So I just want to talk very briefly to explain what baptism is. Um, so first of all, why do we baptise? Well, it's because Jesus said so. He commanded it. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus wants us to be baptised when we've trusted in him. We, as Christians, obey him, so that's what we're going to do today. So that's why we baptise. When do we baptise? Well, it's after someone has repented and trusted in Jesus. Repentance is turning away from sin and turning to God. Trusting in Jesus is believing that he took the punishment I deserved on himself when he died on the cross. He died in my place. So baptism happens after that. Um, being baptised does not make you into a Christian. Okay, We're not making these seven people into Christians here this morning. It's repentant faith that makes you into a Christian, and baptism follows that. Where do we baptise? In public. So baptism is a public declaration of faith in Jesus. It's an outward sign of an inward reality. If somebody wears a Manchester United shirt, they declare that they support Manchester United. If someone wears a ring on their fourth finger, they declare, I'm married. If someone is baptised, they are declaring publicly, I follow Jesus now. I belong to him. I've trusted in him. And then lastly, what does baptism symbolise? Because if it doesn't make you into a Christian, what's the point of it? Well, there's two big things that baptism symbolises. First of all, spiritual death and life. The way I'm going to baptise is I'm going to plunge people down into the baptismal pool, under the water. That symbolises death, spiritual death, dying to self, dying to uh, living my way. Um, and then when they come back out of the water, that's saying, I'm alive to God now. I'm living for him. I, I've been born again. Um, it's not about me now. It's about you, Jesus. This is my new life. I start now. I have new spiritual life because of my faith in Jesus. And then also, baptism symbolises cleansing from sin. Um, baptism doesn't wash your sins away. Jesus washes your sins away, but baptism symbolises that Jesus has done that. Sin is rebellion against God. It's disobeying him and pushing him away. And as we go through life, it's like there's a build-up of the dirt of sin in our life. But when we trust in Jesus, he takes our dirt of sin on himself. He's punished for it on the cross, and he gives us his total purity, so we become washed and clean in God's sight. And that is what baptism declares and symbolises. So, it's time, finally. We're going to do the baptisms. Um, so I have to remember to take this off. Uh, check my phone's not in my pocket.
caught on the big screen as well. So, baptism people, make sure you take care going down the steps because it's very slippery. <laughs> um, first of all then, Ivan, do you want to come up and stand um, and speak in front of that microphone? I'm going to ask you um, some questions. First of all, have you repented of your sin? Yes, I have. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? I have. Will you seek to live for Jesus and the glory of God? I will. Come and be baptised. And be very careful when you come. <laughs> Ivan, upon your profession of repentant faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Michael. Michael, have you repented of your sin? I have. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? I have. Will you seek to live for Jesus and the glory of God? I will. Come and be baptised. Michael, upon your profession of repentant faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> of your sin? I have. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? I have. Will you seek to live for Jesus I and will. the glory of God? I will. Come and be baptised. Okay, Coral has a phobia of water, so I'm going to baptise her in a slightly different way. Coral, upon your profession of repentant faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Penny, have you repented of your sin? I have. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? I have. Will you seek to live for Jesus and the glory of God? I will. Come and be baptised. Penny, upon your profession of repentant faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Vincent. <laughs> Vincent, have you repented of your sin? I have. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? I have. Will you seek to live for Jesus and the glory of God? I will. Come and be baptised. <laughs> Upon your profession of repentant faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Have you repented of your sin? Yes, I have. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? Yes, I have. Will you seek to live for Jesus and for the glory of God? Yes, I will. Come and be baptised. <laughs> Upon your profession of repentant faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Have you repented of your sin? Uh, I have. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? I have. Will you seek to live for Jesus and for the glory of God? I will. Come and be baptised. Upon your profession of repentant faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We're going to get changed now. See you soon. I'll hand over to Paul. Stand here. I don't know if Judy can cope with that. We stand about here. So wonderful, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful what we've <laughs> what we've witnessed. been witnessing this morning. And um, I know all the angelic hosts in heaven are cheering them all on. And um, we can get behind them in our prayers as well, which is what we're just gonna do now. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> Father God, we thank you that um, We've been able to be here as witnesses to your goodness here this morning. We've seen these good folk being baptised. We thank you for their testimonies, the truth of their journeys, their stories, how they come to find you, Lord. And we thank you and praise you for that. Um, and Lord, we want to pray that you would help them as they continue on their journey, that you would be with them and that they would, as we thought about already, step in your footsteps, that they would be led by you. We thank you and praise you for that. 
And Father God, yes, we just want to um, particularly ask that by your Holy Spirit in the coming days that you would really strengthen and encourage each and every one of these seven that have been baptized today, Father. Um, Because those of us who've maybe been Christians for many years, some too long to want to say, um, know that life can sometimes be tough and our faith can be tested. So, Father, I just ask right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, for your protection to be around each one of these dear ones. And God, that in any moment of weakness or testing or persecution even, that you, by your spirit, would protect and strengthen them and give them the right words at any time and bring your words of life to their minds in moments where they feel weak or where they're tested. So, Lord, we ask for your blessing upon each and every one of those, Lord. And may your Holy Spirit continue to guide them and strengthen them in the days ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask um, Sandra in a minute to come up. But we've got a video that we're going to play. And then Sandra's going to come up and tell us a little bit more about it. So there's a a video all about Alpha. So over to, to Judy, if you can show that. 喂，了子啊，你有冇谂过你系边一个？你嚟呢个世界上面要做啲乜嘢？你以后要去边度咧？哇，呢啲都系人生重大嘅问题嚟噶。啊啊，变将军啊！乜嘢可以令我开心？钱啊，钱可以令我开心噶。见到靓仔会令我开心啊！瞓觉，瞓觉。如果有一个神，我会问佢点解会做得我咁型噶？我个男朋友喺边度啊？哇哇！太靓啦！哇！我而家系全世界最出名嘅一个人，我想要嘅大部分都可以得到啦。但系点解我再咁难过咧？我由一个人。发展到有五十个员工嘅规模，好多人都话：，哇，你好顺利，根本你好幸运。过去我曾经认为喺呢个世上，边个都靠唔住，我唯一能够靠嘅就系我自己。翻学、翻工、结婚，人生就系咁样啦。当我明白呢个事实之后，我嘅生命就真系彻底改变啦。太靓啦！喺嗰晚之后，我对耶稣嘅认识就发生咗完全嘅改变。从呢一度开始进入到呢一度，我感觉到我揾到人生要揾嘅嘢，答案就喺呢一度。直到我真正認識耶穌之後，我真實咁經歷到乜嘢叫做有意義、有目標、有價值嘅生活。Uh, yes, I'd like to have a quick announcement about the Cantonese Alpha Course in Cantonese first. 誒，冇錯，我先用廣東話。誒，今日係一個好特別嘅日子，係一個。天使天君都要歡呼高唱嘅日子，我哋作為基督徒，當我哋睇到有七位新抱，佢哋喺主前、人前，以至那惡者之前，佢哋決志受洗歸入主耶穌基督，我哋睇到嘅係莫大嘅恩典。所以我都好想藉住呢個機會去、呃、正式宣佈，我哋嘅廣東話 Alpha Course 會喺聽日正式開始。啊、呃，當中係會有十二堂。呃我哋會跳過幾個 term break 嘅時間，所以我哋係會一路去到誒四月份先結束。直到而家咧，我哋已經有二十位參加者參加咗 Alpha Course。而
亦都好感恩咧，我哋有二十位 helper 喺當中，當中有誒、呃、香港嘅 helper， 亦都有英國嘅 helper。所以我好想誒、呃、邀請大家，如果你哋身邊仍然有朋友、親友，你哋好希望佢哋可以係一個開放、包容嘅平台，可以用佢哋自己嘅方法去溝通、去了解，從而可以接觸，以至認識到基督信仰嘅。我鼓勵你誒、呃、邀請佢哋參加。誒、呃，你哋可以隨時去聯絡我。啊！你可以直接同我講，打俾我，誒 message 俾我都可以嘅。或許因為我哋聽日就開始，或許佢哋會錯過第一個 session， 但係呢個唔緊要，佢哋絕對可以從第二個 session 開始。啊！同時咧，我好希望大家去為我哋祈禱。我哋會誒、啊、直到四月份咧，我哋一路都會喺每一次崇拜嘅程序表當中咧，係會提醒大家為我哋禱告。請你哋為到誒。啊呃、我哋嘅參加者咧，佢哋喺過程當中可以被聖靈感動，亦都可以幫到我哋誒嘅 helper， 我哋喺整個過程當中可以經歷到上帝嘅恩典。多謝大家。So I was announcing about the Cantonese Alpha course that will take place、uh, tomorrow、uh, and that will last until April.、Uh, we need your prayers. Now there are already t w guests in the Alpha course. And there are also 20 helpers from Hong Kong and Britain. They will be helping in the course. So we need your prayer.、Uh, we will keep posting our prayer a reminder in the weekly news sheet in Argyle, so you will know how the course is going on.、Uh, please pray for the guests that they will、uh, touched. They will be touched by the Holy Spirit, and also pray for all the helpers that we will humbly experience the work and grace of God. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for that. We're going to have our reading.、Um, Richard,、um, Richard Baxter is going to come and share a message with us shortly. But I'm going to read from the Book of Romans,、um, the book that Michael wasn't quite so keen on at one time, but、uh, he's come to love, I'm sure. It's one of my favourite books. So. so I'm going to read from Romans chapter six, verses one to four. I need my spectacles for this. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too. May live a new life.、Amen. Praise God.、Amen. So, I invite you to come up, Richard, if you could. <coughs> Would you like the tie, Mike? There we go. You take that, that one, and I'll take this one. Great. So it's still working. So you just clip in, and you should be working. So let me just take a moment. I'm going to pray that God will bless the word that you have for us, Father God. I want to thank you that.、Um, Richard has been instrumental in in Michael's coming to faith, and Lord, I pray that you'll bless the words that he has for us here this morning, that we will hear your truth and know you as our saviour. Just as these good folk here who've been baptised have come to know you as saviour, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen.、Oh, You're very welcome. Shall I take my Bible away? That's great. Super. Thank you so okay, much.、Right. That's great. Good.、Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much, Paul. Well, it's been so so good、uh, to hear a little from the different people who've been、uh, baptised here this morning. People from different places,、uh, people、uh, with different backgrounds and with different life experiences. And I feel really honoured to have been asked to speak for a few minutes now. And I promise it will be、uh, a few、uh, ish minutes. Uh, 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 and you know what? Though each one of these people, Ivan and Penny, Vincent, Michael, Eric. Carrie and Coral, though each one of them are different in many ways, I want to talk about two things、uh, that each one of them have got in common. The first thing is important, I think, and the second thing is super important. And so I'm going to spend longer on the second than on the first. 
Uh, so firstly, they are all known to people here and they are all loved by people here. They're all known and loved by people here. Uh, maybe you usually come along to Argyle Church and you know and you love each one of these seven people. You recognise them as your family through the Lord Jesus. They're all your spiritual sisters and brothers, all children of God, our Heavenly Father. Or maybe you don't normally go to church, but you're here at Argyle this morning, and quite possibly that's because you know one of the people uh, who has been baptised, and so they invited you along to their baptism. And you understand, this is something important to my friend or family member. I'll go along to support them because I care about them. It's great that you've done that. Hopefully you haven't been forced or pushed. Hopefully, like Eric, you've been encouraged uh, to come along today. And actually, it's the other way around as well, though, isn't it? Because it's possible that some of these people just went through all 800 of the people on their Facebook friends list and just invited them all, all of those people that they haven't seen since they were at school together, uh, that guy that once fixed their guttering and decided to add them as a friend. Uh, but more likely, the person who invited you invited you because you are a particular friend. They particularly care about you. They love you. They wanted you to share today with them. And they wanted to share with you what Jesus has done for them, knowing that he can do it for you too. And that brings us to the second thing. They are all connected to Jesus. They're all connected to Jesus. Each one of these seven people have faith, trust in the Son of God, Jesus, and in what he has done for them. And this faith, it joins them up to Jesus, uh, just as it does for every person who trusts in him. And so much of what he has done for them is all pictured in baptism. That's why we've been here, not just to hear, but also to see what Jesus has done for these people. Baptism isn't something that our girl church has made up. It's not something that anyone has made up. It was given by Jesus himself to those who would trust him. And the reading from Romans 6, a letter uh, written to believers by Paul, an early follower of Jesus, uh, that reading explains a little of what it means. Particularly, it tells us uh, two things that baptism shows about what Jesus does for all who trust him, all who are joined to him. It represents that through Jesus, they have died to sin, and that through Jesus, they have been brought into a whole new life. So for those who've been baptised this morning, because of their connection to Jesus, they know that in his death, they have died to sin. In Jesus' death, they have died to sin. That's what Paul is saying in verse 3. All of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. Of course, usually when we think about death and dying, it is a terrible thing, isn't it? But in this case, it's a good thing. Because sin is serious. Sin keeps us separated from God now and forever. And sin is awful because it is a being turned in on myself. Like Michael said, it's about having a heart full of me, me, me. It's about being turned away from God and turned away from those around me. It makes life ugly, doesn't it? It's what means that too often the news in our communities are filled up with war and violence, greed and lust. It's what means that too often our own hearts are filled up with war and violence, greed and lust. And so being dead to those things is good. Because if someone is dead to it, well, then they don't need to live for it any longer. In fact, according to Paul, they cannot live in it any longer. It cannot be their pattern of life anymore. And those who have been baptised show that they know that actually too often their hearts are full of sin. (coughs) They're saying that they want to be set free from this way of living. They show that they recognise their need of forgiveness from God and that this forgiveness comes freely through Jesus. When they went down under the water, it was as though they were dying to sin. 
God was reminding them, this is what I have done for you. I have broken your connection with sin so that you are free from it now. And God was showing us, this person is dead to sin. They have a new master. They have a new Lord. This master, this good Lord, is Jesus Christ, who died in order to set them free from sin. Uh, Vincent told us that God is rich in mercy. And in the death of Jesus, we see how rich and how true that mercy is. Not a storybook, but a true story, the best story. Uh, See, our connection with Jesus has been made uh, when we trust him, and our connection with sin is broken when we trust him. It's like when we say that person is dead to me. We don't want anything to do with them anymore. And it is the same here. In their baptism, our friends are saying, I am dead to sin and sin is dead to me. So it's only through that connection with sin being broken that we can be set free from the the selfishness and the me-firstness that too often traps us. It's only through that connection with Jesus being made that we can be brought to truly know the God who made us and loves us. And it's only Jesus who's able to break this connection. It is only Jesus, the one who lived the perfect life and then died in the place of others. Only he can connect us to himself. And by the way, I've been saying that this is true of the people who've been baptised, that they haven't loved God or others as they should, that they have sinned. But it's certainly the same for me. Isn't it the same for you too? Haven't you fallen short of the good standard that you know is right in in your thoughts, in your words, in your deeds? Actually, as they spoke about their sin, wasn't there something in you thinking, yeah, that's true of me too, even if their wrongdoing and yours might look different? Isn't there something in you right now thinking, I wish I could be washed clean on the inside too. I wish my connection to sin could be broken. I wish I could be connected back to God who made me. You can be, because of Jesus. So because they're connected to Jesus, our friends know that they have died to sin, and then also, and finally, because of their connection to Jesus, they know that in his resurrection, his return to life, they have been given new life. In his resurrection, they have been given new life. As they went down into the water, that signified their dying to sin. And isn't it great that Jamie brought them back out of the water again? That really would have been quite awkward uh, if he hadn't. But, you know, bringing them back up, it wasn't just practical so that they could breathe. Actually, it is part of the picture of what Jesus does for all who are joined to him. If God caused us to be dead to sin and stopped there, that would be wonderful. But he doesn't stop there. He also gives us new life, a life where we live as adopted children in his family. Michael is a son of God. Coral is a daughter of God because of what Jesus has done for them. Each one of these who have been baptised are sons and daughters of God through the Lord Jesus. And because they are part of God's family, that's how they're to live, as part of his family. You see, just as Jesus didn't only die, but also rose again to life, so all who trust him don't only die to sin, but also rise again to a new life. A new life to live for him now, and a new life to live with him forever. A life marked out by peace and gentleness, selflessness and purity, in place of war and violence, greed and lust. A life that reflects what our good God made us for. A life that reflects what God himself is like. A life that is growing towards beauty. That's not always easy. I've been trusting in Jesus for 25 years now, and I can tell you that that is true. But God helps us. 
God puts his Holy Spirit in us to strengthen us to live the lives that we were made for. And he reminds us that we are his children, dearly loved. That we're not working to earn his approval or to earn a place in his family, but that we are deeply loved. Like Ivan told us, it is not necessary to be perfect in order to be loved by God. Each one of these people is known and loved by people here, and most of all are known and loved by God. And I expect that you too are known and loved by at least one person here. But can I say, even if you are not known by anybody here, you are still known and loved by God. As Coral said, I didn't know Jesus, but he always knew me. That's true of you too. God made you for himself to enjoy him and to live for him. Penny told us that all good things have been prepared for us by God. And this is the greatest thing of all, to know God and to live for him and to live with him. And if you trust in the Lord Jesus, he will, he will break that connection with sin in your life. Sin which hates you. Sin which wants to destroy you. And he will connect you up to the one who made you and who loves you. You know, Carrie and all of us have discovered through painful experiences that people are not always trustworthy. But the more that we discover about God, the more we realize he is utterly trustworthy. And so if you trust in him, he will cause you to be dead to sin and alive to a new life, a good life, the true life that starts now and that carries on forever. He's done it for each one of these seven people. He's done it for me. Won't you come to him and ask him to do it for you too? I'm going to pray briefly and then I'll hand back to Paul. Our Father God, thank you so much for what we have seen and heard this morning about your work in people's lives and about how it all points to the Lord Jesus Christ how it all points to your wonderful love. And Father God, I pray for any here uh, who right now stand on the outside of that love, whether these truths about Jesus are all new to them or, or whether there is just something holding them back. Oh Lord God, I pray that they would learn of your love. I pray that they would uh, come to know you, the sin-forgiving God, the life-giving God and that they would be, uh, know that full assurance of heaven through the Lord Jesus and of living a, a life for you now. I pray it in Jesus' name and so that he might be shown to be great. Amen. Now, those of you who are observant will have noticed that we earlier on didn't have a song for choral because we've kept that song for now, our last song. It's a song that many of you may know. It's called How Great Thou Art. And I'm going to invite you, if you're able to, to stand and join singing this wonderful hymn, How Great Thou Art. <laughs>
great. You really raised the roof there. Um, a wonderful hymn to yeah. end um, the meeting on. Yeah. If, if you've been challenged by what you've seen and heard today, maybe something that Richard said, or perhaps it's something that one of the baptismal candidates said that has made you th want to find out more about the Christian faith. Um, maybe you're interested in doing Alpha. Um, please do come and speak to me or Andrea or Sander or Jamie. Or Jamie. Um, we'd be more than happy to talk to you about that. Um, there's also some literature at the bottom here, down the, on the bottom here, about baptism. And it's so, free. It's, it's free, free yeah. for you and to take and read. Yeah. And one of them's been written by Richard, I believe, as well. Is that right? Yeah, one of the little pamphlet, the books has been written by Richard. So, yeah, um, if you're watching online and you want to find out about how to be become a Christian, you can contact us. Um, the details are hello at argylcommunity.church. Hello at argylcommunity.church. So um, please do contact us. That, that will go through to Jamie, our pastor, and he will arrange to contact you by email and see if there's something you can contact you by other means. So um, thank and you for that. And don't forget that in my room, the room behind me to my right, there's tea and coffee served after the service. And also, um, we've got a first birthday in the house today. It's little Deborah's first birthday and her parents have um, brought a cake for us all to share that, that we can have a piece with our tea and coffee. And, and, don't, and don't forget, after the cake, you don't eat too much of it because there's that bring and share lunch. All right? Yes. So please do stay for the bring and share lunch. Um, we'd ask you as well, actually, if you, could, if you could move through to the tea and coffee area so that we can set up tables, etc., in the area here afterwards. But I'm sure there'll be somebody helping and guiding us on how we need to do that, but just so you're aware of that. And there's also this evening a prayer meeting on Zoom at 6 o'clock, which includes communion. And um, those of you who are on the church group, we need to turn that on. But the link will be posted on there, but if you're not on there and you want to join, you're very welcome. Please speak to our pastor, Jamie, okay. and he will arrange the details to be given to you. Um, so thank you. Now we're going to say thank you to the worship group. Fantastic. <laughs> for the PC and the PA operators, the for, the, for the stewards, Leo for doing the mopping up down here so you don't slip up when you walk and, through. And and the baptistry, yeah, thank yeah, you for that. Yeah. And thank you to Jamie and to Krish and to Richard yeah. and to Sandra. There's so many people being involved yeah, yeah, and we thank you for your contribution. It's yeah. been a real and blessing. And I just want to say a special thank you to each of the seven of our baptismal candidates, to Coral, to Kerry, to Eric, to Michael, to Penny and Vincent and Ivan. And Ivan. <laughs> So a big thank you to each of you for, your te for sharing your testimonies today and for being obedient unto God. May God bless you in the coming days. So Father God, we just want to close, just want to say thank you to you as, uh, as we draw to a close of this service this morning. just want to say thank you to you for your presence with us here this morning by the power of your spirit. Amen. I want to thank you for each of these seven um, candidates that have this morning gone through the waters of baptism in allegiance and obedience to you, their Savior and their Amen. Lord. Continue that work in each of their lives by the power of your spirit that you have begun. That, God, you might empower them and embolden them by your spirit to go out into a hurting, dark, broken world to be your light and to shed abroad your love and your truth to those that they come into contact with, wherever Amen. that might be, day by day. Give them that courage and the boldness, Lord, we pray. And we just, I just ask for your blessing now upon each and every one that's been here in the building this morning, those that have been watching on the live stream. Father, that you'd bless us each one as we go out into yeah. this week and that we might remember, Father, that you in your word promise that you will never leave us Amen. nor forsake us, Father, and that nobody is beyond your reach. <coughs> and we thank you for that and we give you praise this day in, in the Jesus, name yeah. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So may God bless each and every one of you and do continue to um, fellowship with us this morning. We'd love to get to chat 
to you this morning over tea, coffee and lunch. Yeah, there's, there's one more thing though. Uh, um, Mary, would you like to bring Deborah up? I think if any of the children would like to come up, I think Mary has said that she'd like to have a photo taken with the kids. So if all the children could come up to the front here. But don't worry, you won't fall through into the water. The lid's down. And then Mary and Addie are going to come up and someone's going to take a photo.